morning, family. This is Ricky, and welcome to Hope for Today. We are talking this week about navigating our relationships. We call it People Week at Hope for Today. 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 <laughs> Sorry, I know that's lame and cheesy. I don't care. It's what we do. It's who I am, okay? Uh, we're talking about how to navigate relationships because, man, relationships are everything. Um, but the, the challenge is that people do peopleish things. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine. Uh, who had a conversation with a family member that just went awry. And I'm that, just real talk, the family member just did something that was just dumb and that they just shouldn't have yet. Or family member, I'm gonna be in a relationship with that person for the rest of my life. And so it's incumbent upon me that when, even when they're not showing up well, that I show up well for Christ. So we're talking about those virtues, we talked about charity, talked about truthfulness and today. I wanna talk about what it means to be hopeful. I think it's very important to show up consistently with with being the person in relationship that is hopeful. Um, People actually call me somewhat pessimistic. I'd always just say a pessimist is an optimist with experience. But anyways, I know that there's reality and I'm not saying run away from reality. I'm saying figure out what it means though to believe the best, to trust God for the best, and to make sure that you're not the person who's all gloom and doom all the time but to find ways, not to lie, not to stretch the truth, but to put this positive spin on things through the power of God's word and the gospel. Uh, There's a new movie, Inside Out 2, Pixar film, um, about the emotions inside the head, and there's anger, and there's anxiety, and there's fear, and there's joy. And I love it because they honored all of the emotions, and they set up sadness. The, the, The emotion of sadness is really essential, and I think that was right. But imagine sadness without joy there. It will be gloom and doom all the time. And some of us are that little blue sad person in our small groups and in our family circles and in our marriage. And what does it mean for you to understand that hope deferred makes the heart sick? That's the verse I'm taking us to today. Uh, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12 says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. This is the idea that when there's no hope, there is no hope. That when there's nothing that inspires and stirs up the heart and soul about what can be, our focus starts to believe that what is will always be what is. We've got to be hopeful. Here's the idea. Too much pessimism will extinguish optimism. And I think it's very important for you to be that person who's never showing up like the Debbie Downer, but also showing up like the the hopeful Heidi, if you know what I'm saying. Um, My boys uh, use all the buzzwords, and so they're 10 and 7, so they always say, oh, that's so Riz. And that's really the only one I remember. But the one they always love is cringe. Dad, you shouldn't be cringe. Dad, you're so Taylor cringe. I'm just like, shut up. You know what I'm saying? But I think if we're the gloom and doom, Debbie Downer, that it starts to create a cringe in our relationships that makes you the person that people don't want to be around. And I want to encourage you that Jesus got up and rose again for you. And the, what, what's dying, Jesus has the power to resurrect that thing. And what does it mean for you to believe that for you, but also bring that hope to your relationships? Amen? Hopefulness. And that's hope for today. I'll see you next time.